This is not uh, scheduled to be a long sermon at all. We, if, if you, uh, if we go through this as short as it looks, we'll be out of here fast. But not that I want to get out of here fast, but uh, it doesn't look like a long sermon at all, which is uh, for some the best part of the service. Um, you have to admit, uh, you'll have to admit, that I know something about serving God. Being that I have uh, 34 years of experience. Is, as I think of serving God and the service of God, I've observed uh, three levels of service. Three levels of service. The first one being the most shallow, and the last one being the deepest. Three levels of service. Level number one, I call it the selfish level. Um, People will serve God because they serve God for themselves. Uh, I would like to join a bus route. I'm excited about it. Right? They're not so much thinking of how it will affect children or families. They're thinking more about the fact they want to do this. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. None of these levels are wrong. Uh, Praise the Lord for anybody that serves the Lord. But if somebody stays at that level, and they stop being excited about it, then they stop doing that service. Because they're doing it for self. Correct? So that's level number one. I call that the selfish level. Level number two, as I've thought about this, I call this one the selfless level. The selfless level. And these people have moved from, I'm doing this because I like doing it, to a more uh, mature, a more uh, deep reason for serving, and that is they serve God because they know that in serving God, they will be a blessing to others. They will be a blessing to others. Amen? And the day may come where they personally are not as excited about that service or that ministry as they were when they just started. But being that they're not serving any longer just for themselves, but now they're considering how it affects and how it helps others, then that will keep them serving in that ministry even though they may not be as excited as they were in the beginning. For example, you could have a Sunday school teacher says, oh, I didn't think I was excited about it, but boy, these boys, they look like they're not learning anything, or these girls look like they're not learning anything, and and boy, that little one guy, uh, uh, Shaquan, he comes every week, and he, oh boy, he climbs up the walls, and and... If they were just doing it for themselves, then they'll quit. But now then they move to another level. And they're saying, I I can't quit because it may hurt my students. It may make my students stumble. See, they've moved a notch, another notch. And now it's their selflessness that will keep them in the work of God. Are you listening to me? But let me give you the third level, and of course, the best level of all. I call that the supreme level. There was the selfish level, there was the selfless level, and then there is the supreme level. All right? And that's found in, in, the, in, in the verses here that we read. It says uh, in verse 23 of Colossians 3, In whatsoever ye do, Do it heartily, and then there are four words, 
which are the title of the message, As to the Lord. As to the Lord. What does it say? As to the Lord, right? And, and here a person graduates to graduate level service. And that is, they're not just doing it anymore because they're excited about it, though they could keep the excitement. They're not just serving God because it benefits students or kids on a bus route or other people or the pastor, right? Now then they do it because they do it for God. That's the best reason of all. Amen. Amen. As to the Lord. Amen. As to who? As to the Lord, right? So that's the level we all want to obtain someday. Amen? Now, any of the three levels are good. But in order to stay at serving God for the long haul, eventually you must transfer the reasons why you serve God to the main one. Amen? As to the Lord. Now, all of us know in the New Testament... There are sections in the epistles that are addressed to servants. Servants, right? Like the ones we read. The word servants is the Greek word doulos. Doulos. Doulos means a slave. A slave. During the New Testament times, under the control of the Roman Empire, there were 60 million slaves. 60 million slaves. These were called servants. They had masters. They were purchased at slave markets and so forth. Slavery is an old, old, old practice. Are you listening to me? Many of those slaves were Christians. Are you listening to me? So when Paul was writing the epistles, he knew that members of these churches were slaves. So he wrote addressing them. Are you listening to me? So we could say when we come to the Bible and it talks about servants, it's a reference to slaves. We could say, well, pastor, those passages in the Bible would not apply to us because we're not slaves. But you know the Bible's principles are applicable for all of eternity. So these principles, though we are not under bondage and in slavery, they apply both to an employee and his boss. And they apply to a Christian and his service to God. Amen? So these principles can be applied both to employment and the ministry. Amen? I would like to focus primarily tonight, and briefly, by the way, on the four words, as to the Lord. Amen? If you look at verse 23 again in Colossians, it says, it sets as to the Lord in contrast, to not unto men. Look at verse 23. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Right? So, God is saying there, when we serve, we're doing it for one or the other. Amen? Amen? Even at your job. So well, I'm working because I want to please my supervisor. Hope, hopefully he'll give me a better position. That's all right. But God wants you to work even in your company. Amen. As to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now in the process of working as to the Lord. You may please the boss man. And he may say, thank you for working so hard for me and the company. And you could say under your breath, sir, I'm doing it for somebody higher than you both. Amen? Amen. 
But God is saying that there are some people that do it as unto men, both employment-wise and ministry-wise. Are you listening to me? So everybody in this room that serves God in some capacity, you're either doing it for men or you're doing it for God. Amen? Amen. So when we work at church or even on the job, you, you may work for a man, but I must get to the place where I realize that I'm doing it for the Lord. Amen? amen. Say amen. amen. Somebody could see you do a good job at work and they may say, you know, God bless you for taking care of the details. You go the extra mile. Amen. You know that you're doing it for the Lord and He impels you to do a better job than the rest of the employees. Amen. Is anybody here tonight? Amen. Would you keep that in mind? As to the Lord. Amen. What is it? What am I saying? As to the Lord. Right? So um, let me give you, let's see if we could illustrate this here. Yes, I'll need you with a brown jacket. <laughs> Leather or pleather? Pleather. I hate to disappoint God, but he's God right now. Okay. Skip with the P Yankee pinstripes. He's the pastor. Uh, Reuben. Reuben is um, Reuben is a bus kid. Stick up, step on that step. Okay, bus kid. Uh, I'll have to use you. You are a bus captain. Okay. You are a bus captain. When he works a bus route, he will benefit the bus kid. Turn around. He'll benefit the bus kid. Right? Amen? Amen? He's got to decide if he's doing it for him. It's okay if he's doing it for him, but it's not the best level. When he works the bus route, he will benefit him as well, the pastor. Because he will bring people that will sit in the pews and come under the sound of preaching. Amen? Amen. But ultimately, he has to be wise enough. To say, I'm not doing it for him, and I'm not doing it for him. I am doing it for him. Amen. Amen. As to the who? Lord. Lord. Now, in the, uh, in the process of doing it as to the Lord, he is being a blessing to the bus kid. Amen. And he is being a blessing Amen. to the pastor. But if the bus kid quits coming... And the pastor gets upset with him. And he's doing it for him. Amen. Guess what he's going to keep on doing? Woo, the same thing. Amen. Is anybody here this morning? Amen. This morning, this evening. Woo. Thank you. You all are very terrible actors. Do not go into acting, okay? So we want to do everything we do under four words. As to the Lord. Look, look, do you ever get tired of what you're doing? Say, God, it's as to the Lord. Somebody ever upsets you? As to the Lord. Somebody mistreats you? As to the Lord. You get tired and you say, somebody else ought to do it. I want to quit. As to the Lord. As to the Lord. Amen. So I have a little, uh, a short, compact sermon. I got to say this before I go on. Um, and uh, let me see. Many, many years ago, 
Um, when I was a pastor of this church, um, my younger brother left the church. And my brother Wally's here, so. Uh, brothers are all different. When we were little, Roger and I were like this, my brother. I could not go to sleep unless I turned around and hugged him. And there was not an ounce of funny in us, amen? So when you're little, you just, you get attached to, to somebody. I can't tell you the circumstances because it's nobody's business. But he ended up leaving the church. And I was a young preacher, and I was devastated. And I remember getting in my car and driving to Long Beach and getting off and walking on the beach. And figuring out as a young preacher why I'm doing what I'm doing. Amen. And I went home back in peace and said, I didn't start doing this for my brother Amen. or for anybody else. And I'm not going to stop doing it. I don't say that to hurt anybody or anything. I say that to tell you that in your own personal life, somewhere like I preached a little in the morning, so there's a little similarity. You have to settle it. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Otherwise, we're going to be real immature. How many know, think they know my personality? I'm a little direct. You come in late to the bus and say, hey man, can't you get here on time? Don't you get here? Don't you go to work on time? How many times have you heard that, Peter? Because I don't think too much about offending him, I think about, hey, this, this we're talking about you, God, what, how we're supposed to do for you, yeah. right? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Um, so, am I making little sense here? I believe these four words can transform your service for God Amen. and your life. So let me give you as to the Lord and how those four words should have an effect on your service. By the way, even in your employment, in your employment, amen, amen? amen. because the similarity between master and boss is, is pretty close. Employee and boss is anybody here, yep. right? You know, folks, you could go to work and your boss is a heathen. And he's unfair and pushy and got a bad mouth. And if you let your job performance be dependent on that boss man, you're not going to have much incentive to be a good employee. But if you transcend to the place where you're not doing it for the bad boss man, but you're doing it for the real boss, Amen. then regardless of how you're treated there, you're still going to be the best employee in the company. Where's my ameners at? So even though I don't want to focus on secular employment so much as I want to focus on the service of the Lord because that's what we do around here, I believe that these same points could apply to the job. Amen? Amen. So as to the Lord, number one, there are four of them. And we're scot free, ready to go home. Number one, as to the Lord elevates the quality of our service. Isn't that a no brainer? Amen. Amen. I suppose. 
If I were working for the president, though I do not agree with the president, Amen. the president is a liberal, I'm a conservative. Amen. The president is for planned parenthood funding, which is 100% for abortion. That's right. All right? I'm totally against that. Amen. Which is just the scratch of the surface. Nonetheless, if I had a job working for the president, it would elevate the quality of my service because of the importance of the person I'm working for. So when I put this little equation, as to the Lord, into what I do, automatically it raises the bar of the quality of the kind of service I offer God. Amen. One amen, and that's the whole, one amen in the whole church. And whatsoever ye do, the Bible says. See that verse 23, Colossians? And whatsoever ye do, we'll skip to do it heartily for now. As to the Lord, that affects all the work I do. Matter if it's standing behind your preaching or sitting behind the steering wheel of a bus, whatever I do, I must resolve and settle once and for all who it is I'm doing it for. Amen. Say amen. amen. So I go pick up people. I stop at a stop. We call them in advance. We wait for them. I honk. Fifteen minutes later, I'm still waiting for them. Man. They come in walking like snails. <laughs> I'm not talking about you, Miss Elaine. Man. All right. Hey, Pastor, how you doing, Pastor? Good, brother. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. As to the who. As I was doing it for him, I'd feel like cussing even though I don't know cuss words. Anybody here tonight? You see, we got to figure out who it is we're doing it for. The Bible says, "What and whatsoever you do, as to the Lord. So whatever I'm doing, it is for the Lord. See, if I'm doing it for the Lord, nothing I do is going to be insignificant. It raises the quality of the service I want to do it for. Say Amen. It raises the bar and the significance of what we do. It will apply to your job too, by the way. But we should give, it should give us a higher perspective of the ministry and the things we do because for the most part, uh, the concept of the world is what we do in a local church doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Say amen. amen. This is why we ought to give everything we do for God our best. I don't think you heard me. This is why we ought, to, we ought to give everything we do for the, God, for the Lord our best. Amen? Amen? Isn't it a plain fact that the best deserves the best? Amen. Shame on us. Amen. You, uh, you know how to scold you. Amen. We're guilty you, of not giving them our best. Amen. Guilty of being sloppy. Amen. Guilty of halfway efforts. Amen. Guilty of something is better than nothing. Amen. Guilty of all these papers behind the bus. Nobody's going to see them anyhow. Amen. We're guilty of being sloppy and not giving quality service Amen. to the Lord our God, the creator of the universe, Amen. the savior of our soul, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he deserves better than what we're giving him. Anybody here tonight? Amen. Yeah, well, something better than nothing. That preacher better not cry about it. Don't worry about me, brother. Look higher than me. Amen. The God of heaven deserves our very best. Amen? Amen? Not just some of the time, but consistently. And even with the smallest little things we do for him. Amen? Amen. By the way, if, if you let this get a hold of your heart, as to the Lord, Amen. it could change the quality of what you do for God. Amen. You'd surprise us. Amen? Amen. Say amen. amen. You know, Nehemiah went down to build some old walls new walls and old burned down 
city. And they try to get him off the walls. And he said these words that you know well. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. That old man of God comprehended the greatness of the task he was doing. It wasn't just putting up some walls where the other ones had been broken down and burned down. It was no ordinary, mundane work, masonry work. It was the greatest work in the world. He knew he was doing it for God. He wasn't boasting about how great a job he was doing. He was boasting about the greatness of the work he was doing. And blessed be God, that's the way it is. Amen. That's why we ought to give God our best. Amen. I wish God to get a hold of somebody tonight. As to the Lord. Amen. Say amen. You want to do sloppy next time? As to the Lord. Does the Lord deserve that? Does the Lord deserve things being thrown together? Does the Lord deserve last minute preparation? Does the Lord deserve a bunch of uh, yawning? Oh, okay, students, anybody want to play the next game? No, don't play the next game. Teach the next lesson. Yeah. Say amen. amen. As to the Lord. Number two. I'm not going back to the other one. So you catch them the first time or you don't catch them. Number two. It energizes the effort we put into our service. Look at Colossians 3.23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Heartily. Heartily as to the Lord. Heartily means put your soul in it. Put emotion and energy in it. Do it with enthusiasm. Be excited about the whole thing. Abraham Lincoln used to say when I see a man preach, I want to I see him, I want him to preach like if he's fighting a swarm of bees off. That's pretty exciting, amen? Look, folks, aren't Christians guilty of dragging themselves to do God's work? Aren't Christians guilty of having a long face as they do God's work? Aren't Christians... Guilty of coming to church like if it's a chore? Aren't Christians guilty of dragging their feet out soul winning? I'll tell you why. It's because you forgot who you're doing it for. Bible says, if you know it's as to the Lord, you'll do it heartily. Amen? Those four words could transform lifeless, listless, Deadhead kind of service to the God. Those four words, as to the Lord, could stir somebody up. Amen? amen. Say amen. amen. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but all over the Bible, I find that God wants enthusiasm. Amen. We got enough, e- enough people that are too calm. Amen? amen. People that are half-hearted, deadheaded, wow. complaining. Even that act like they're doing the good Lord a favor. The good Lord ought to be glad I'm doing this for him. Amen. Amen. Look at the world's professional athletes today. They put us to shame. I know they're making a lot of money. But folks, you hear them, you watch them play. And their playing can be characterized by passion, sweat, energy, they're consumed, they push themselves, they act like a game, a game is life and death, right? We on the other hand come to church and act like the greatest work in the universe is not much to get excited about. Amen? We've all played sports. Raise your hand if you played sports before. Hopscotch. Tetherball. Sports. Handball. Uh, ha- um, jump rope. 
tennis, <laughs> dominoes, Folks, I played a lot of sports. I'll be honest with you. I didn't like boxing that much. Whenever there was a fight, oh boy, I was nervous. But baseball, Man. baseball, Man. amen? Not soccer, Man. baseball. <laughs> little ball, little glove. One skinny bat, skill. Soccer, big wide net from that corner to that corner. Put blindfold, kick the ball in there. Wherever you kick it, it goes in. That's how easy that is. But baseball, we were so in love with baseball, we would be out at the field two hours before the game started, waiting for our turn to get in there and play. Are you listening to me? Boy, you think about that. When we come soul winning, God, what are my inner thoughts? Am I excited about this? Do I want to get out there? Am I going to chase somebody? Dear God, if I could get excited about a game and be there two hours ahead of time, shouldn't I be excited about running up some stairs, knocking on a door, and preaching the gospel to somebody? Boy, we ought, to, we ought to be embarrassed every time one of those guys makes a goal and he runs around and takes his shirt off and acts like if he just, uh, he just hit a home run for God or something. Anybody here? What about the professional musical performer? Right? I know we don't agree with their worldly music. But man, they get into it. You and I come to church and your mouth can't even open to sing the songs of God. Come sing the song. Look, we could sing a lot louder than what, what, we're, what we sound like. Because when that small group of choir people sing, it's pretty loud. So if all of us put everything we had into it and we got some energy in it, brother, we, we, we'd be pretty loud. But you got locked, y'all, when it comes to singing for God. You're not much excited about that. As to the Lord, I'm not going backwards. Number three. Anybody here tonight? As to the Lord. I said as to the Lord. As to the Lord. Amen? Well, let that stick here and here. Tell you feel like backsliding on God, as to the Lord. Settles the issue. Number three, it eliminates slacking off in our service. Look at 322. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Not with what? I service as what? Men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God, whatsoever you do, do it hardly. As to the Lord. I service is not difficult to interpret. It means working hard only when the boss's eye on you. Boss's eye is on you. It is the idea of a fellow that wants to impress men. So when the man he's trying to impress is around, boy, is he. Right? Right? Boss isn't around? Is that a business convention? Right. It's reading his car and driver magazine. Anybody here? You know why? He works to impress men. So when men aren't around, he slacks off. Anybody here? Amen? But I wonder tonight how many of God's servants slack off Loaf around, goof off, quit early, put a couple of tracks on somebody's windshield, go home, and watch the ball game. The eyes of the preacher aren't on you, but the eyes of God are. 
preacher won't ever find out. How would he know? He doesn't have GPS or whatever I need. So if I'm doing it as to men, I service. Then when the man I'm doing it for is not around, then I'll slack off. This also has another negative effect. Eye service or doing it to please men has this negative effect. If I'm serving to impress men and please men, and if these men rub me the wrong way, if I get in conflict with these men, then I will also slack off because I am no longer trying to impress these men because they've rubbed me the wrong way. Anybody here? In result is a poor job that is going to be done. Amen? Say, say amen. amen. So, and eventually you quit altogether because you were doing it for men to begin with. Is anybody here? When I do it as to the Lord, I realize He's watching me all the time. Proverbs 15.3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Amen. You see, that's why we ought to work hard even when men aren't looking at us. That's why when you go soul winning, you ought to put your hour or hour and a half out there and, and wait as long as you can and witness to as many as you can because nobody may be watching you as far as men go, but God's eyes are on you. Say amen. As to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Say amen. amen. So give it your best. Work hard. Stay at it. Not because I'm being watched by men, but because I'm being watched by God all the time. Amen. And that matters more than anything else. Amen. Some time ago, I remember, we, we went soul winning on Tuesday. Um, it, was, it was a cold night. It was a Normandy Manchester, before you, you're going south on Normandy. But before you hit Manchester, that area there. And it was cold. And it was getting a little later. And we stay out as long as we can if we don't have enough folks signed up. So the doors we were knocking on, the people themselves that lived there were kind of scared. Like. It's dangerous out here. Amen. What are you doing knocking on our door at this late hour? Well, it's not that late, miss, you know. It's about 7.30. It's not, it's not that late. Anybody here? Amen. So we kept going. This, this is not a, a big exciting story, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> so I went to this apartment way in the back, upstairs, last door way in the back. I'm up there knocking on the door and bang, bang, bang. Real close by, somebody shooting at somebody. There's a wrought iron gate. Boy, I duck down. I don't want to be the next Martin Luther King up there, amen. I duck down. I'm already there at the door. First question I ask myself is what am I doing out here? Oh, yeah, I'm doing this for God. I forgot. I knock on the door. Elderly black man answers the door. He looked kind of feeble. Something tells me, give him the gospel. Who knows how long he'll last. I give him the gospel. I present the gospel. The man asked me if I could come inside his door to pray with him. I stepped inside the door. And I prayed and he accepted, prayed, asked Jesus to come into his house. Amen. You know, when I stepped in that door, I'm not charismatic, Pentecostal, or even Bapticostal. <laughs> I kid you not. I sensed that Almighty God was looking down from heaven Amen. with a smile on his face, Amen. saying, Preacher doing what you're supposed to do. Amen. 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 Of course, after I was done, I was very careful making my way out. Amen. Amen. Let me give you the last point and I'm all, I'm all finished. ESPN, here you come. 
as to the Lord. Number four, it enables faithfulness in our service. It enables faithfulness in our service. Colossians 3.24. 3.23 says, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. And then note these words. For ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Christ, should I say. For ye what? Serve. See the word serve there? It is a present tense imperative. Amen. Present tense. Because you serve and serve and serve and continue to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen? The connection between as to the Lord, for ye serve the Lord, is simply this. When you and I are doing what we do for the Lord, we will continue to be steadfast in the doing of it. Amen? Amen? When you serve for the Lord, it will be present, active, imperative tense, which means you know that you're commanded to serve the Lord and you will keep on serving the Lord. Anybody here tonight? I, I hate to look at old pictures. Because you, you see how much you age. Nah, that's vanity. Because in all these church pictures, you see people that used to serve with you. That quit on God. Quit the ministry. Why? I don't know. They got their reasons. Were they doing it for themselves? Were they doing it for someone else? Maybe. But for sure they weren't doing it for the Lord. Because if they knew and were aware and conscious that they were doing it as to the Lord, they'd have never quit. Amen. When you serve the Lord, sometimes the people that benefit from your service for the Lord don't appreciate you, don't thank you, don't and they take what you do for granted. Thus, if you're doing it for men, your feelings will get hurt and you'll quit. But if you're doing it as to the Lord, it won't stop you. Because you weren't doing it for men to begin with. Say amen. Um, as to the Lord will keep you in the work of God. Were we not commanded by Jesus, occupy till I come? Or stay occupied in my work until I come. When you serve as to the Lord, you realize that your service is ongoing even for a lifetime. You may quit, but you didn't have a right to quit because the work remains. Amen? When you quit, you didn't quit. On your local church. Or your Sunday school kids. Or your preacher. You quit on the Lord. Amen. Awareness. Of this truth. Has kept me in the ministry. This is not a complaint. It's reality. Do you realize in 34 years, I, cannot, I can no longer count how many times I've been taken advantage of? Been used, been let down, been stabbed in the back. Why am I still at it? The grace of God, first and foremost. And secondly, I realized a long time ago why I am in this work. And who it is I'm doing it for. As to the Lord. Amen. As to the 
Lord. Let me ask you a question tonight, very simply. Who are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? Well, I do it to help my preacher. Thank you for your help. But you're going to stop after a while. Amen? Got to go above and beyond me. As to the Lord. Amen? Say amen. Now look, folks. I'm trying to help you tonight. Every servant of God, doesn't matter if you are Sunday school teacher, choir member, deacon, bus driver, um, nursery worker, uh, usher, whatever it is you do for God. You need this personal conviction. You can't ride on my conviction. You need to get it yourself. Amen? If not, you will stop serving God someday. Amen? If not, you will walk away from your local church someday. Because as it stands, somebody will let you down, upset you, offend you. Amen? Say amen. amen. And if you're doing it at that level, then that's the level you'll stop. Are you here tonight? But if you ascend to the best level of all and say, I'm doing this as to the Lord. Amen. amen. You just keep doing it. Amen. Say amen. amen. I would not like to not show up for the Lord. Amen. amen. Say amen. amen. I've told God, dear God, I thank you for another day amen. of being able to serve you. Sunday I wake up. I'm almost finished. I'm not going to ramble. I wake up and I know there's a lot of, lot of things to do. Amen. Monday you wake up and, yeah, what are you going to do? Clean up the dogs. Rake up the leaves. Go to Walmart, buy some Hot Wheels, Amen. clean the car. Easy stuff. Sunday, God, those people have heard me for 34 years. Help me, dear God, to still be able to get to them Amen. and help them. Please help me, dear God. Amen. Help me to remember what I'm supposed to teach in Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Help me, dear God, to be courteous when I drive and on and on all, all these little things um, but the bottom line is this I settled it way back a long time ago we were at Lorena so that's been a long long time ago but those four words have made all the difference in the world in my service for God. Amen. Why, preacher, do you do this? Oh, well, I do it because I love these people and I want to help them. I do it because I've, I've been privileged to be in the ministry of God and preach the word of God. And, 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 and I'd rather do that than go to Disneyland or, or Hawaii or Hawaiian Gardens where I'm taking my wife for our 35th anniversary. Really, I'd rather do this. But somewhere, I couldn't put a date, but I figured it out. As to the Lord. Why are you doing it, preacher? As to the Lord. Right? I'm not going to review the four points. You review them yourself if you want to. Anybody here tonight? Let's see what time we got. 25-2. Wait, it's not that early. It's that early? No. What show are you still going to get in, Peter? No. Okay. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, please, oh God, could you, you could change somebody tonight. You could make somebody's service a lot better than what it is. Lord, we're not in the little leagues. We're in the big leagues. What we do around here is 
as to the Lord. 